for Shaman's Forge Woodcraft. Okay, now we've discussed my thoughts on what a pocket knife, excuse me, my thoughts on what a survival knife is. If you're going to use that term survival knife, then that's the way I'm going to go with it. I mean, it's the knife you got with nothing else. Any and all knives are survival knives if that's all you got. So let's define what we're really talking about here. We want a knife that excels at many, many skills because we don't know what we're going to be facing. It needs to be strong enough to get us out of a dire situation. I mean, really bad stuff. Stuff you wouldn't ask a knife to do, but this is all I got. We're also asking it to do the job of a knife. You know, I mean, not just be a sharpened, you know, pry bar. It needs to be a knife and be a, a, a usable tool, not just it, it's a great pry bar. Okay. Several, oh, two decades ago or whatever, back during the survival days of the 80s, and they were toting big Rambo knives and, you know, all these big things, hollow handle knives, those were the survival knives of that day. And for the most part, most of them were junk. Um, oh, you could nail it in the stump and tow the world around with it, but it was a lousy knife. Um, it was big, it was unwieldy, it was awkward, it didn't perform right. Or they would make a knife that would hold an edge and, oh, it, you could nail it through, you know, railroad spikes and it would still hold an edge. And if you ever pried on it sideways, it snapped like it was made of ice. Nobody could come up with a design, a real design, one that did the jobs that were asked for it. So let's talk about a second of what jobs do we want this knife to perform. So, that's my master woodsman. You know about it, and we've talked about it a lot. This knife is the best knife. And that's, that's not an exaggeration. Serious, guys. This is the best field knife I've ever had. Uh, it's edge retention, how it works in the field for processing game, processing wood, carving dingle sticks, little trap parts, making this, making that. It's the best knife I've ever had. And it's the knife, like I've said in many of my videos, it's going to be strapped to me. I'm going to the woods with this. But it's not the perfect choice, and I know that. I know that this knife fulfills all the functions I want in a woods knife. But it's a little thin in a survival situation. Means, to me, survival means something totally unexpected happened. Now let's go to the worst case scenario. I'm in a situation where I've got to get through a wall. You know, I've taken shelter inside of a building and a tornado's taking it out and I've got to get through a wall. Now this will hold up really good, but it wouldn't be my first choice, to be honest, to get through a wall. Or for a combat knife, it's, it's a little thin for a combat knife. Um, at the same time, in a urban setting, you know, I'm going to be called upon to bust things and cut things and do things that ain't in the woodland setting. So this knife would not be a bad choice. I would be extremely confident with this, but there would be a better idea. Okay? And that's the thing. That question is the question that William Collins asked me and several others take what this knife does, the Master Woodsman, the finest wood knife I've ever had. Starting with that, what would you want in a survival knife? A standalone knife. I don't like the tool one, I don't like the term one tool option, but 
let's go with that a one knife if I was going to put you in a situation and you had no clue what it was going to be you may be in the middle of a city you know you're passing through the city when it happens and you're stuck on the interstate and this is it this is your knife you know you've got to defeat car bodies you've got to defeat auto glass you've got to defeat cinder block you know you've got to work your way through a chain link fence all those things that are extremes and out there and but you can see it you can understand it okay it's also got a function as a kitchen tool it's got a function as a knife you know it can't be that sharpened cleaver it's got to be something that I can use for food prep that's gonna be a big thing I've got to be able to not just beat it to death, but I got to be able to fillet with it. I got to be able to process game with it, butcher with it. You know, I've got to be able to technically butcher a big game animal with this. I got to cut up a whole cow. You know, I've got to build shelters with it. I've got to do all of those things that you can think of that you're going to immediately think of knife, but I got to only have one. Now that's a tall order. It's got to be a hard enough edge, it does not dull easy, it retains its edge, yet be sharpenable in the field with improvised means. It's got to be a chopper so that I can generate shelters easily and hack my way through the back end of a moose to get a big hunk of steaks. It's got to be able to cut bone if I'm butchering a big game animal. It's got to be able to fillet fish. It's got to have a tip that allows me to do precision cutting and carving because of dingle sticks and things that I'm gonna need in the field. You see how impossible that idea is starting to sound? Well, it's not impossible. It just requires, nothing is impossible given enough time and resources and talent. Well, when William approached me and a couple of other people with the idea of taking this and going up with it. That's what we were facing. And so as many of you follow Williams Channel know, we came up with a knife. Uh, there were several prototypes and revisions. I think the C model is what finally stuck. A, B, and C. William didn't want these babied. William wanted them tested, you know, really do it. And when William said, I want to see it tested to destruction, he wasn't kidding. It took Dan Lutz to destroy it, but he did it. And it, it was not easy. Um, William will be putting up video pretty soon demonstrating it. But when you can hammer it into a tree and stand on it, yeah, that, that's pretty good. Now, with all that teasing and etc., when is, are you going to get to see this knife? The survival knife that will be called, or is called, the WCSK. William Collins Survival Knife. But those letters also stand for those four points. It's got to do what the master woodsman did. It's got to do the job that a woodsman needs. C, it's got to be able to do a combat job, what our soldiers need. It's got to be able to cut up pallets, dig, all those things that a combat soldier needs that hunk of metal strapped to his body for. S, survival. It's got to be able to do skinning. It's got to be able to do, you know, all the survival jobs that you can come up with. It's got to be strong enough and durable enough and yet be sharpenable easily in the field with improvised means. A standalone design. And finally, and this is the one that's mostly overlooked, it's got to be a knife. Kitchen work. It's got to be thin enough that it can slice meat and vegetables and not just butcher them. It's also got to be able to process game, fillet, 
it's got to be able to, you know, be able to scale, uh, scale, uh, scale a fish with it. You know, it's got to be able to process big game, small game, all of that. It's got to be a tool that I would use for food, for hunting, for camping, for survival, and it's got to be strong enough to do all them jobs and not some big bow hunking we unwieldy thing that i'll leave uh, you know at the truck <laughs> i'm not going to tote that thing you know it's got to be as portable as this do the job of this scaled up and that's what we come up with so you want to see what it looks like william is releasing it he gets to release it first. At the end of this video, I put the link. It will be the uh, the thing for his site. You can go look at it. He gets to say and show it first, and then tomorrow or the next day, I'll have my first video where I'll show you because. Right there is the knife and right there's the prototype that led to it and i'm going to show you these knives and how they relate and compare to my master woodsman i'm excited about this guys and honestly really the one thing that william keeps asking is is it going to replace my master woodman i don't think so that's not a detriment on the knife but I can see where it is. This knife is going to be a standalone knife. And I would stake my life and reputation on that knife. That's something I don't say lightly. But uh, you hand me that knife, I can do anything I can do with this one. So, stay tuned and safe journeys, guys.